Good morning everybody, once again welcome back. In this video, you will learn how to essentially implement your own AWS Glue bookmark functionality to process only new incremental files. So I'm gonna show you how to implement your own bookmark and checkpointing in this video. So let's get started with the video. Now, before we begin the video, there are uh, three edge cases over here that I wanna make sure that I explain you very well. The first edge case is A, you have a folder where you have partitions, right? So basically the partition could be year, could be a month, could be a user, could be anything. The second edge case is basically you have a folder, right? Where you do not have any partition, then you have every, all the files inside that folder, right? So there, it's basically not partitioned, right? And then the third edge case is here, basically uh, assuming that you have your data lake, which is uh, partitioned by a year, month and day. In these three scenarios, I'm gonna walk you how you can implement your own AWS Glue bookmark and also by a small uh, hands-on lab as well. All right, it's time that we talk about the first case that is you have a folder inside which you have a lot of files and essentially you wanna only process incremental files. How do you essentially achieve that? I'm gonna talk about in this video. For the demo, I have uh, two um, uh, folders here. So first we're gonna talk about the no partition, meaning uh, here you have a folder called no partition inside that you have all your files or your you know data files. So how to essentially implement bookmarking over here? So this is pretty straightforward. Um, so what you need to do is first, you need to go inside and you need to um, basically process all the file and the last modified date of the file, you need to store that on a checkpoint. So the next time when you run, when you do a list operation, you can filter out the keys essentially greater than that particular timestamp. That way essentially you'll only get new files. Let's take a look at that. I'm back on my code. Uh, again, I'm gonna show you the template what I have written so far. Again, this is the path, right, uh, where my files are. So what I'm gonna do is essentially, again, I'm not gonna do the commit first. I just wanna show you how things work. So if I do that, I get all the nine files, right? now. Again, glue also has like a job dot commit, right? So essentially I'm doing a commit. Now let's see what happens. So I've processed all the files and at the end I've essentially committed, okay? So now let's see if I run it next time. Again, uh, since it has already processed, it's gonna resume from the checkpoint and it's gonna do a list operation and then gonna say, okay, give me keys which are greater than this particular timestamp. In this case, I do not have any new files, hence I did not, did not get any new data. So for example, now let's consider I added some new data. So I'm gonna call this method over here, okay, and uh, let's insert some new files, uh, probably uh, over here, we're gonna say 11 to 12, okay, and then we're gonna call the main function. So again, this is simulating that the new files came in, right, so uh, if I go back, and if I refresh my S3, here you can see I, uh, wait, wait a second, yeah, I do have a new file that is coming in, for example, that, here, you, here you go, 11, 11.json. So now if I execute my template, what, I, what, what are my expectations is I should only get that new file that are coming in. So let's see, as you can see, 11.json, and now if I process again, I have no files to process. So let me basically talk a little bit about the logic. So the logic is pretty straightforward. You say, hey, do you have a checkpoint? If you have a checkpoint, load from the checkpoint, do a list partition, meaning uh, see what folders do you have. If you have folders, okay, uh, in that case for each folder, get all the objects inside the folder and then filter out the object keys greater than the timestamp, right? And then essentially you return all the object, which is again, newly processed data. If you do not have any partition, meaning I don't have any folders there, then essentially simply perform a list operation, filter out by timestamp and return all the objects to the user. Well, when you run the job for the first time, you wouldn't have a checkpoint. So in that case, the code would directly go to this particular block over here, right? So it will say, okay, do you have a check? Uh, do you have any partitions or not? If yes, again, iterate over each partition, uh, you know, perform list operation, right? And then essentially, uh, when you do the commit, it's gonna store the last particular timestamp on, on, on the S3. And again, the process repeats. Now let's take a uh, look at the second case, basically, which is, uh, in, in scenarios where you have essentially partitioned your data lake in a year, a month, a day, and then um, you wanna process data in an incremental fashion. How do you achieve that, right? Again, in this case, your list operation API, so what you can do is you can form the path dynamically, which means year, month, and day, 
right and then what you can do is uh, inside the day you can perform a list operation which means you're going to list out all the objects right once you get all the objects then when you do the commit you store the last modified date as a checkpoint on s3 so the next time when you come in you can simply say okay do a list operation uh, give me all the objects greater than that particular uh, timestamp right again if your data lake is partitioned by a year month day then you can essentially you don't need to perform a list operation on all the partition meaning if you have folders for 2022 2023 2024 right uh, etc right so in that case what you can do is you can form the path dynamically and essentially process new file in this case your list operation api call would be much smaller right but in if in scenario your um, updates or if new inserts are going into the older partition let's say 2022 or 2021 in that case you do not have any choice you have to perform a list operation right and then you have to get all the object keys and then filter out by that particular timestamp that that is what you have to do now there is actually one more method that you can use to avoid uh, the expensive list operation now what you can do is basically um, uh, if you want to process incremental data right what you can do is you can set up an event basically anytime a new file is added or added on s3 on that particular folder right what you can do is now you can fire up an event a lambda function and then this lambda would basically put these new object keys into an sqsq now whenever your job is running basically you can take the object keys from uh, as you can pull the queue you can retrieve all the new um, files that are coming in and then process that and then essentially delete again um, those uh, keys right so that's again another way to do it uh, as well right so these are the possible ways in which you can incrementally read data from s3 uh, so just to summarize uh, the, uh, the, 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 the the basic idea is to essentially store the timestamp and then say okay perform a list operation and say okay give me all the objects greater than that timestamp then if your data lake is partitioned by a year month day in that scenario you're gonna you're gonna form the path dynamically your list operation call would be much smaller and uh, then you can store the last date again on the checkpoint and then you can say for that uh, dynamic path in that list operation uh, give me the new objects right so basically that's again another way to do that and if you don't want to do a list operation then the next uh, approach is set up an event meaning anytime objects are added you essentially fire up a lambda lambda will put it into an sqs queue and you can asynchronously pull the queue and then read all the new objects uh, from the queue and then delete it these are all the methods um, uh, to again uh, read data incrementally from uh, s3 Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you guys have enjoyed uh, the video. Um, and if you have any more questions, uh, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll be very, very happy to discuss them. With that being said, keep smiling, keep programming and see you in the next video.